during the COVID-19 pandemic, the use of non-invasive positive pressure ventilation, or also known under the acronym NIPPV, has been discouraged in some healthcare settings in favor of early intubation. However, this practice has been questioned by a number of clinicians, especially in more recent times. When we talk about NIPPV, what we mean is both continuous positive airway pressure or CPAP, as well as bi-level positive airway pressure or BiPAP. In our paper, we summarize what is known about the role of NIPPV in patients with COVID-19 and other viral infections and make a case for consideration of NIPPV as a possible alternative to early intubation in patients with COVID-19. My name is Dr. Claudia Dobler, and I'm a consultant pulmonologist at Liverpool Hospital in Sydney, Australia, and an associate professor at the Institute for Evidence-Based Healthcare at Bond University. I'm also a collaborator of the Evidence-Based Practice Center of the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I'm gonna talk about the article, Non-Invasive Positive Pressure Ventilation in Patients with COVID-19, which will be published in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings in December, 2020. There are numerous guideline recommendations about COVID-19, and the majority of them focus on pharmacologic treatments. In fact, only a few of them even mention the role of NIPPV. And in some of the main American organization guidelines, it is actually not mentioned at all. So the practice varies quite a bit, and there is no um, general consensus about whether we should use NIPPV in COVID-19 or not. One of the major concerns is that the use of NIPPV increases the potential viral aerosolization and therefore the risk of infection. Aerosolization is a process that creates small and light enough particles that will be dispersed in the air. And once in the air, people can inhale it and it increases the infection risk, in particular to healthcare workers. However, the evidence to support that there is a higher risk from NIPPV than other modes of breathing support causing viral aerosolization is not very good. In fact, there is an experimental study that showed that high flow oxygen via nasal prongs may cause more virus aerodispersion than NIPPV. What we found in our article is that when looking at clinicaltrials.gov, there is a huge number of trials that will be performed looking at different pharmacological interventions but only a very, very small number looking at non-drug interventions. In fact, only about 0.5% of all registered studies were aiming to look at NIPPV or related breathing support mechanisms without addressing any drug interventions. Now, what is the consequence of all this for patients with COVID-19? Well, patients who overcome COVID-19 with NIPPV, as opposed to intubation, are likely to make a quicker recovery. They will benefit from avoiding sedation, inability to communicate, potential delirium and post-traumatic stress disorder. We have to admit, however, that it is unknown whether delayed intubation in patients with COVID-19 in whom NIPPV fails is associated with a higher risk of complications. In our paper, we make a case that evidence from large, well-conducted randomized trials is urgently needed because future pandemics with other viral pneumonias are likely. And at the moment, it is unclear what the role of an IPPV versus early intubation is. These trials should address the effectiveness of NIPPV compared with early intubation or other breathing support modes, such as high flow nasal cannula, but they should also look at the risk of viral transmission to healthcare workers. 
when patients are using different breathing support strategies. Thank you very much. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.